Um, I want to talk today about the fader that's loyalty to setting. And uh, this lies between plausibility and playability. And here there are some words that need just a little bit of explanation. And I will start with setting. Uh, as Jok was talking about when she introduced the mixing desk of LARP, uh, you could say that the setting is the situation the LARP is setting. Like this? Uh, so this can involve the world, like for Till Death Do Us Part, the world was modern day Palestine. But more specifically, it was uh, a wedding. For 1942, uh, 43, uh, it was a Belarusian countryside in the Second World War. And in the village, it is uh, an unspecified village during conflict resolution. So the setting is something about where and when the LARP takes place and what sort of situation there is. Plausibility comes from the word plausible. And you can say that plausible is that based on the circumstances, like the situ situation you're in, what is likely to happen. For instance, in Till Death Do Us Part, it was likely that the guests would be friends and family. Uh, the opposite to plausible, plausible is implausible. Uh, and that's when it's like, this is not likely to happen. For instance, if we had had the guests to be aliens or the Israeli prime minister, that would be highly unlikely, highly implausible. Uh, on the other side of the thing, we have playability. And this has to do with the possibilities for actually interacting and having an interesting experience. And if you slide that all the way to the max, everybody can do anything. Uh, and all the characters and all the players have a lot of agency. So I'd like to just say something about what agency is, because it's the word we use. It is the possibilities a person has to act in a given situation. So if you have limited agency, you have very few options what to do. Whereas if you have a high level of agency, you have very many options. Uh, many LARPs strive towards being very plausible. And this goes especially for LARPs who aim for high levels of realism. This can be either historical LARPs or LARPs who seek to portray our society today. It can also be very well-established fantasy worlds, uh, where it's like they have very elaborate things about what is realistic in this fantasy world. But mostly like historical and contemporary. And some good things about this is of course that you can achieve, you can achieve that realism to a certain degree. Uh, you can make it feel uh, like the players are in a different time, in another place than what they usually are in their real life. And they can learn from this. Especially if you're doing historical games, they can learn from being in that realism. It can also be less of a stretch of the imagination. By that I mean that it's like, if you have to like twist everything around in your head, it can impair play because you like, what was this again? How were these costumes? What was all this? So to play on like things that's known to them before makes it easier for them actually to play. Well, it'd be plausible. Uh, <clears throat> because making sense of things is very important to very many people. Uh, but a problem with this is that what is plausible, as I said, is based on the circumstances you're in. And often we lack knowledge of this, especially in the historical context, and, uh, but also within the fantasy worlds and all these things. Uh, we, if you don't know, um, like for 1943, you could like read up and read up and read up, and you could go on reading forever. But as Jok was talking about, there is a limit to what we can fill into our minds. And it's also a difference in what the players find important. Uh, so if you, for instance, play a, a society with very different gender roles from ours, uh, this gives a lot of responsibility to the players who are playing the active gender in this, to make sure that they're 
they have to keep with what's plausible in order for the other gender also to be able to play on what's plausible. A very simple example of this is from the LARP uh, Casino Libre. Uh, it's also a Second World War LARP set in Croatia in 1943 in a casino. And in the 1940s, uh, women had started smoking, uh, but in the high societies, they would not light their, light, uh, their cigarettes themselves. They would take out the lighter, uh, the, the cigarettes, and they would maybe put it in their mouthpiece, and then they would sit there and wait until a gentleman lit it for them. And this was something that was like stated from the organizers, it was in the material, and all these things. But when the LARP came, a lot of the men forgot this. So the women were sitting there, waving their cigarettes around, trying to get the attention in <laughs> some sort of way, and in the end, ending up lighting them themselves. And this is, of course, uh, no big crisis. Uh, but in other LARPs, similar situation might become more serious problems. Another problem with the lack of knowledge is that when you don't know enough about what's plausible in the situation, people tend to go for preconceptions. They go for what they think they know. And in many cases, this means that they apply values from the 1950s or the 1880s to everything that's in the past, regardless of what is actually plausible in that world. And then you get collisions between players who have different um, thoughts on what is plausible for this world. Um, to, high, uh, to aim for high level possibility can also limit the types of characters a player can play. For instance, in many settings, uh, it's highly implausible for a woman to play a soldier or for a person of color to play anybody with any sort of power in society or for a man to play a housekeeper. So focusing on possibility does limit the agency of the players in the LARP and it also limits the agency for a lot of the characters. So this sometimes also leads to unfortunate situations where the player is totally focus on what is, it is plausible for their character to do. Uh, for instance, they might kill another character because their character is a murderer, and so they kill people. Or they might keep their enemies locked up all day long so they won't be able to spill their secrets. And this is, of course, plausible for that character to do, but it's really, really boring for the players that this happens to. Uh, it also limits the LARP group's potential for change, because when you go for the same sort of interaction we have in our life or in our preconceptions of earlier days, nothing changes. The final thing is that it can get really, really boring. <laughs> it's uh, like, for instance, if you have a LARP that's about a uh, working class community, and they actually have to go to work in the factory, and they have to stand for 10 hours, silently along the conveyor belt, making things. Well, it's plausible for their characters to do that, but it's really, really boring. Uh, because of these drawbacks, and because we often want to change the way we see things through LARP, but most importantly because we want LARP to be interesting to play for all the participants, we choose to go for more playability. So the pros for sliding the fader towards playability is that it can give more agency for all players and all characters. It can also give us some perspective on our own worlds, because you can compare the situation where everybody had lots of agency to how it is in the real world where we don't. And then you can start asking questions about why is it like this and how can we change it towards everybody getting more agency. And you can also have more fun, and you can also have more intense play. The cons of this is that if you slide it all the way to, play, uh, to playable, it might be really unrealistic. The LARP might lack focus. It's right, really hard to get a coherent story because the play is going in all directions because people find, oh, this would make good play here and now. So that's not very good either. So what we often do as LARP designers is that we find what's plausible but still playable, or what's playable but still plausible. 
And I say this in two different ways, because uh, this illustrates two different camps of LARPers in many ways. You have some LARPers that think that LARPs that sacrifice plausibility for playability are bad games. Bad games. Uh, whereas other LARPers will think that LARPs that re reduce a lot of player agency for plausibility are equally bad games. Bad games. This might create like big controversies in um, a player group. In many ways, this is a question of taste. Some would even say of ideology. Because when you limit agency to get plausibility, you also make an uneven field between your, your players. What, if, what is important for you guys is to be very clear where you stand on this in your communication. Um, I will now give one uh, example for each approach. Uh, this first one is from the plausible but still playable side. Uh, yesterday I was talking about Till Death Do Us Part, uh, and I talked about how we made the bride's family background Marxist and non-religious in order for her to marry a foreigner. That's an example about how to make it plausible but still playable. Uh, another example is from the Norwegian Western LARP, uh, Once Upon a Time. Uh, they had decided that the setting would be the Wild West, but when they decided where in the Wild West to place the LARP, they chose Wyoming, because Wyoming was a state where women had a lot of agency already in the 1880s, where this life was going on. Uh, they had had the right to vote for a long time. There were many um, women in leading positions. So this would make for a lot of uh, playable, but also plausible female characters with a lot of agency. Um, if you look at the other example, uh, one of the lives that you have played here, which is one of the most playable ones, um, or one that focuses the most on playability, is when our destinies meet. Uh, people try to make it plausible still, like we did the first time I played it. Um, when I played it first, it was an all-female group. It were just girls. And uh, because of the... F we, we pretty quickly figured out that we would have a bachelorette party, like the party with the bride and her friends before she get married. And we figured out that um, the framework gave us a lot of romance plot, uh, both romance and sexual uh, relations and all these things. And at some point, we started to think, what does this um, have to do for the LARP that we are only women playing these plots? Are we all, are the people playing these plots lesbian? Are we all lesbian? And what does that have to do for the LARP? And we figured out that even if none of us had any problem with playing a lesbian, we figured out that we didn't want to play a minority. We wanted to play what was normal. And after a while we figured out that, well, let's keep the setting, but change the world. So we made an adjustment to the world, which said that there are no men. There has never been any men. And let's just do not talk about how we reproduce. Uh, and so we got to play uh, what was normal, we got to play, we got a more playable situation, but we had still made some sort of coherent story, we had made it plausible in this world that we could have these relations without that having to be an issue. Sorry. Um, yeah. The last thing I will say something about is that it's important to remember um, that what is plausible it changes with the setting, but not only with that. It also changes with the genre and with the playing style. So I'll give two more examples. Uh, for instance, in 1943, it is very plausible that the characters don't make any risks towards the Germans. If you're playing a believable Belarusian uh, villager, you would not sneak around and do stupid things and risk getting caught. Or maybe they did, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but it wouldn't be that plausible. Whereas if we look at another LARP from the Second World War, Café René, this changes a lot. Café René is a LARP based on the British TV series Allo Allo. So it's a slapstick comedy about a café owner in Normandy. 
And in this LARP, it was perfectly possible for the communist resistance to sneak into the shadow where the, where the Gestapo had their headquarters, dressed up as choir girls, with rifles under their choir dresses, singing Ferrer's Shack to get in, uh, and in order to steal the painting of the fall Madonna with the big boobies. So, because it's a comedy with a slapstick playing style, it changes what it's plausible to do. And this is important to also communicate to your players, because you will have people playing, maybe not Café name, but similar things that are not that far out, as if it was dead serious historical business. And that leads me to the last point, which is that you need to communicate this. Both with your, you have to figure out with your co-organizers, where is our level of this fader? Where do we want to be? And then you have to communicate that very clearly to the players. Then you get happy players, and you get happy co-organizers. And you don't get a lot and lot and lot of stupid discussions. So that's my tip too, clear communication.